What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. We missed last week's injury report with Dr. Morris due to the uh, shitty internet that we had going on over here in Brooklyn. But we are back and better than ever. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this doesn't actually cut out midway through. Let's pray to the internet gods, the fantasy gods, that we can get through today's injury report. Um, and we are talking about week seven, week eight-ish, you know, getting closer to the middle of the season. Injuries, some guys maybe multi-week, some guys you might have to worry about. Uh, for this week in particular, now, there aren't really too many quarterbacks to worry about. We have Patrick Mahomes with uh, maybe high ankle sprain, but he'll play through it playing tonight. If you're watching this on Thursday, um, he should be fine. There's been no reports that they might actually sit him or anything. So let's move right over to the skill position players. And I'll start off with the wide receivers. Now, we have Amari Cooper, who's been an absolute fantasy stud for the most part, maybe a couple down games. But that passing offense has kind of run through him, and he's done a great job for anyone that, you know, ended up drafting him in the third, fourth, fifth round, whenever. Now he's dealing with some type of leg injury. I believe it was a uh, was it a quad injury. Yep. And that is possibly going to hold him out for this week because he is not practicing as of Wednesday. We film this on Wednesday night. goes up Thursday morning. As of we know right now, he didn't practice this week, and he said he was in a lot of pain this last weekend. Uh, what is your concern level for Amari Cooper, and do you think he suits up in Week 7? I'm quite concerned about Week 7, and I don't think he will play this will severely impact the entire offense. They have a smash spot versus the Philly defense that you just saw, funnel defense that you just saw Stefan Diggs go absolutely nuclear on. They want to stop the run, and they're willing to give up for the pass. The problem is Dak is missing both Collins and Smith on both sides. Uh, other injuries that usually don't get discussed, but are very important. And now he's likely to miss Cooper. Uh, so you said, well, he's got Gallup. Well, if you look at the numbers, Gallup struggles without Cooper. Gallup's a two. Yeah, Gallup's not yeah. an alpha. So you need he, – he needs Coop, a Cooper in order to smash. So, uh, I mean, I know he's going to see an increase in targets if, if Cooper likely misses. Uh, but I, don't, I just don't think he's going to have the smash pot game that you think he's going to. They may have to use Zeke in the – you know, more of as a route runner than a rusher because their, their, their defense is legit. This reminds me of the, the T.Y. Hilton injury from a couple weeks ago where he had that quad injury, it flared up mid-game, he missed the next game, and then he was fine thereafter. But, but unfortunately, this is just poor timing. You, you, if you started him last week, you kind of got screwed out of points because he really didn't do anything last week. And then you're going to probably miss him in week seven. So you, you're kind of getting a bit back-to-back -back performances. And this one is a fantastic spot. Last week was too. So it's just unfortunate. When he's on the field, he's he, in healthy. He's really good. But he's not going to be on the field this week. And if he is, I have no faith in him. And he's at a high risk for re-injury. Yeah. Um, well, he's in a similar spot. You know, you mentioned T.Y. Hilton's kind of quad injury. He rested up and he's coming back off the bye, so he should be ready to roll. Um, they have a bye right after this Philly game. They come back and they play the Giants, which is another obviously very good opponent for fantasy wide receivers. Mm -hmm. After that, however, you know, things get a little messy. They take on Minnesota, Detroit, New England, Buffalo, Chicago, the Rams, who just picked up Jalen Ramsey. But you will get Philadelphia in the fantasy playoffs. Uh, so for right now, I guess we're a little bit nervous about Cooper. He'll probably won't suit up in week seven if he's in substantial pain, uh, but they get the bye week. So he should be ready to roll back in week nine um, if he does end up sitting out this week. Devontae Adams is another guy that I am not really sure if we should expect him to sit out or not. He's been missing some time with the turf, though. He's missed, I believe, two games already. The problem with Devontae Adams is, you know, this is a, a longer injury timetable for some guys. I, I believe I saw anywhere from like two to six weeks and depending on the severity of it, um, but he hasn't really, he hasn't been limited at practice. He's not like suiting up at all and, and running through the drills or anything. So it seems like he's a little bit farther off than, uh, you know, fantasy owners hope to see with a guy like Devontae Adams. So you kind of need back in your lineup as your wide receiver one. Green Bay is obviously hurting at the wide receiver position right now. Allison's probably out. Uh, MBS was in and out of the game last week with this little ankle issue. So they need Devontae Adams back. I don't know if they need him back against Oakland this week. Mm -hmm. KC, Chargers, Carolina. So the schedule gets a little bit more tougher for the uh, for the passing offense there. What are we thinking about Devontae Adams? He's already missed two weeks, and he's not – doesn't seem like he's close to return yet. When I initially discussed Devontae Adams' injury, I said this is a turf toe, and most guys can't return in the first two weeks, but most of them feel better by the third week. So that's pretty much come to fruition. Uh, we're entering the third week, and there's a very good chance he returns to, 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 to the field this week, which okay. his owners will be very happy about. 
He's not out of the, the woodwork yet. He can re-injure this, and that's exactly what happened to A.J. Green last year. Uh, you remember he, he came back. I think he played three games or so, and then he re-injured it and ended up having season-ending surgery. So he's not out of the woodwork yet. He needs to make sure this, this heals, um, but also he helps the team. He doesn't, obviously you saw, he doesn't really need to be there to, to be effective because they've been managing to win without him. Maybe the reps have helped a little bit, but the, the question is that the offense is just kind of in craziness without him. I mean, Jimmy Graham is like a corpse of his, of his former self in New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, Kumaro is just MIA. Uh, MBS is in and out of the field that he caught two for 48, which was disappointing to me. Uh, Allison just hasn't been very reliable. And, he, you know, Jones is, is, is dropping balls and now pretty much a full timeshare with, with Williams. So it's like, is there anyone on this offense that's going to step up? Is that Lazard? Is that something that you can trust? So this isn't exactly a pretty situation. I think there's a good chance he comes back this week versus Oakland, which is a very good spot uh, and gets right. Uh, but we will probably, it's probably going to be more of a game time decision. And if he plays, I will start him. But I just don't have much confidence in anybody else on the team because of the way it's played out over the past couple of weeks. Okay. So Devontae Adams, I guess we're still going to just, we're going to have to keep a close eye on uh, injury reports as they come out in the week. Hopefully he starts getting a few limited practices and hopefully he can get a full practice in by the time, you know, Friday comes around. Uh, a couple other guys that we want to talk about outside on the perimeters for the Patriots. We have – everyone's banged up in the wide receiver core there. Julian Edelman's oh, yeah. been playing through his chest injury. We have Josh Gordon dealing with some sort of knee injury. Now, yeah. he didn't practice on Tuesday. They did not hold a practice on Wednesday. I believe they had off some weird, you know, scheduling thing where they play Monday night, so they had off on Wednesday. Yeah. Josh Gordon didn't practice Tuesday. Philip Dorsett returned to practice on Tuesday. He's been dealing with a hamstring injury. Uh, I, I don't believe the Josh Gordon injury is really – any sort of concern. Um, and I believe that if Philip Dorsett is returning to practice on a Tuesday, he should be ready to roll by the following Monday. Um, so any concern about the availability for these guys? Because if, you know, one of them misses, then the hyped up Jacoby Myers gets onto the field and we could see some production because whoever just goes into that cycle ends up uh, putting up some kind of numbers. But I, I would assume Gordon and Philip Dorsett are both probably going to be on the field. Probably. The Patriots are a little screwy with their timetables. When you think Rex Burkhead should have been able to return, he didn't. True. We can talk about so, uh, so, I mean, the issue with Gordon is he's been he's been awful. Like, he yeah. really hasn't been good, the, especially this year. He's disappointed significantly. He got really lucky in, in this knee injury and ankle injury. This could have been a lot worse just by the way that he kind of rolled up on it and it got tweaked. My suspicion is this is a mild to moderate MCL sprain, which is that ligament that runs north to south on the inside of the knee. Uh, very common knee injury. Uh, most of the time, if it's a grade one, these guys can, can, can push through it. If it's a grade two, they're usually down for a couple of weeks. Running backs have a tendency to, to stay out a little longer because they cut a lot more uh, than, than wide receivers. My, if I were to bet on it, I would say uh, both will play this week. Uh, Dorsett is with a hamstring. He, the, the data shows anywhere from five to 15 days missing is, is pretty much standard rule of thumb, regardless if it's grade one or grade two, which is fascinating. But, uh, and he's in and about, about that window. Uh, so they're, they're going to need both of these guys um, with Darnold back. And they have a decent wide receiving core. Bell's still there. I know how good the Patriot defense is, but they still need to score points, and they just haven't looked very good. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, despite winning. I think that Dorsett um, is a better play here. I think it'll be Edelman Dorsett. They ruled out Gronk pretty much for the rest of the season, saying he is not coming back. So you can kind of put that to rest. I think Gordon uh, is probably 50-50, um, depending on how he does throughout the week. Uh, but again, he's more of like a, a boomer bust play than anything he's been reliable. Yeah, he's been super disappointing. And I think this... Uh... This Jets defense is actually a little bit better than they're getting credit for because obviously when you're playing with Luke Falk at quarterback, every part of your team is going to look pretty shitty. So it's probably a tougher matchup, like you said, for a guy like Gordon who really has done you know next to nothing uh, in terms of like fantasy production on the season. So um, they are actually the top. What are they? Top ten? Top ten or top eleven? I think in coverage grades per PFF, the the New York Jets pass defense and obviously with Donald back they're going to be a little bit better on defense but yeah overall it's just not looking like a very explosive pass offense so I would actually play Dorsett over Gordon as well I mean the touchdown upside hasn't been there the big play upside has not been there so it's like all the things you wanted to see from Gordon 
we're just not seeing. So it's just possible that Gordon is, you know, he's a fine role player in this offense, but maybe he's just not um, the guy that we had hoped to see. Uh, another guy that we had kind of, you know, that we collectively, you and me, uh, were not high on going into the season, but a lot of people were still banking on him playing well, Todd Gurley. And for the most part, you know, we've been pretty on about what our concerns were for him going into the season. Now he's dealing with this thigh contusion, I believe it is. He missed last game. Malcolm Brown and Darrell Henderson filled in. The offense did not look good. This run blocking line is pretty shitty. Uh, but how quickly do we see Todd Gurley returning to play? Do you think this is somewhat related to the knee arthritis? And like, what's your what's your feel on, on what's going on with Gurley right now? And is there any like concern long term for this? So I don't know what happened and why all these people are getting quad contusions all of a sudden. <laughs> Did they like not wear their quad uh, pads? Do they, does, does it shift from the back of the leg and the hamstring to the front of the leg and the quad midway through the season? I don't know what's going on, but you tr traditionally don't see many quad injuries. We don't usually see hamstring injuries this far into the season because the guys are warmed up. Herndon is a little bit of a different story, but for the most part, um, you usually see hamstrings early and then it kind of fades out and you don't hear about them. Quad right. injuries aren't super common. So I don't know why they're getting so big. Maybe they're not wearing their pads. Maybe they're, maybe they changed their pads. So there's basically two types of quad injury. And the same with Cooper. There's a, a bunch of guys that are all dealing with this. A quad contusion or bruise is uh, usually a deep part of the thigh at the, at the part, top part of the thigh that uh, is usually a result of a helmet hitting your top of your thigh. The deep part of the muscle has a really good blood supply and bleeds like crazy. When it bleeds like crazy, the surrounding tissues swell up with fluid and it's very uncomfortable. Usually we have to drain those with a needle. These guys usually don't come back in a week. Usually it takes two to three weeks for these guys, if it's a bad bleed, to come back. If it's just, if it's quad strain, which is a, a muscle strain, kind of like a hamstring strain, a pull, some people call it, um, that's usually farther down the muscle in the middle or towards the bottom. Those take a couple of weeks only because you got to wait for the muscle to heal before you start running on it again. Because when you run, it's going to want to stretch. And when it stretches, it's going to re-tear. So traditionally, both of these take about two weeks, anywhere to two to three. And this is kind of the same thing with T.Y. Hilton. We saw about two weeks later, he was fine. And, and then he got another week off uh, with the bye. So um, my suspicion is Gurley's 50-50 to play again this week. This may be their way of managing his reps as well. But at the same time, Henderson looked pretty damn good. I didn't catch a ton of this game, but um, I know Brown was in there, but they were facing a tough defense. So they kind of had it challenging. On the other hand, these next two matchups are smash spots. So um, if you want a team to play as a, as a, as a catching running back, it's going to be Atlanta. Um, and I think they're playing Cincinnati next. So those are both smash spots. My suspicion of Henderson is on your wire. You should go pick him up because he's probably not going to last long. And he could be a league winner if if they just kind of decide to phase Gurley out and bring Henderson in. Malcolm Brown, I think, is the third wheel here. Yeah, I, I think both running backs had their moments throughout the game. Like Brown came in. Brown was a starter. Henderson didn't get on the field until midway through the second quarter. Brown got five carries on the first drive and ripped him off, like nine-yard gain, 10-yard gain, seven-yard gain, five-yard gain. And then they pretty much immediately, like, phased him out because I think they got down. They started throwing the ball a little mm -hmm. more. When the second half started, Darrell Henderson was the starter, and he ripped off two big runs. And I think he gave him that, like, explosive side mm -hmm. of the running game that Malcolm Brown just doesn't account for. Malcolm Brown got stuffed on the one-yard line twice, so maybe if one of those gets in, you know, we're looking at Brown maybe a little bit of a better light. Overall, I'm not – super optimistic about this offense right now. I'm not super optimistic about the running game. I think both of them are like borderline flex plays right now. I'm not confident in getting either of them, yeah. even if, you know, Todd Gurley is out, but I do want pieces of any offense that are going against the Atlanta Falcons. So you know, on bye weeks, you could definitely do worse than, uh, than either of these guys. Cause I'm sure they'll end up on the goal line a couple of times. Now will be Brown's uh, go to, you know, fantasy production for this upcoming week for Darrell Henderson. He should get, you know, his eight to eight to 12 touches in that range. And, if he breaks off a couple of explosive plays, which we saw him do time and again in college, you know, he'll end up giving you some ROI on, on starting him in your fantasy lineups for week seven. Now, Alan Kamara, this situation's tricky. He comes into last week with an ankle issue. That's all we know. It happened at the end of the week. I think it was Friday. All of a sudden there was a report that he missed practice and there was an ankle issue. He ends up playing in this game. And he gets like 18 touches or 18 opportunities or whatever. Doesn't do much. Latavius Murray gets involved way more than he normally has been throughout the season so far. 
And Alvin Kamara is in and out of the game. Now they're saying he was dealing with an additional knee injury in mm-hmm. this game as well. Mm-hmm. And now there's a new report, you know, NFL media's Tom Pelissero reports Alvin Kamara has a high ankle type issue that will limit him in practice. Now, a high ankle type issue, I'm not sure if that's like code word for high ankle sprain, yeah. but that's if it they just want to get cute. Okay. It, it is a high ankle sprain, you're saying? Yeah, that's a high ankle sprain. I don't know what the hell they're talking about if they don't. Okay, well, that, that's a much more serious injury than they're letting on, and he shouldn't be playing through it, right? And right. The, the, the way they're talking about it and the reports that are coming out are making it seem like, you know, they're, they're pretending like he's going to play. They go out and sign Zach Zenner today, you know, the former right. back of the Detroit Lions, which common sense, two and two equals four, seems like Alvin, good. Yeah, it seems like Alvin Kamara is probably not going to play, or if he does play, he will be like the third running back in there. It's just a very emergency situation type of player. Concern level for Alvin Kamara is a little bit high, at least over the near short-term like future, because we're not getting Drew Brees back until after their week nine bye, then they get Atlanta in week 10, and everything should be smooth sailing from there on out. But, you know, for week seven, weeks eight, um, you know, as an Alvin Kamara owner, you should be worried, right? Very. Uh, they have a tough matchup this week. I believe they're playing Chicago. Not good. The fantasy PT at, at the fantasy PT did a great video. I think I retweeted it um, where he broke down where Kamara tweaked his MCL on his knee. Okay. Um, you can see at the end of the play, he grabbed the inside of his knee. He couldn't put any weight on it and they helped him off the field. So that when you're a running back and you're trying to cut, uh, if it's your left knee and you're trying to run right, you need your right knee. You would need your left knee to cut inward, but the, the, the inside of that left knee, that's where the MCL is. So if it's not happy and it's banged up, your knee doesn't want to stop when you're going in in order to cut back. So that's the problem is you need to wait for that MCL to heal before you can start zigzagging, which is what these guys basically need to do. High ankle sprain uh, is furthermore concerning. The MCL doesn't concern me a ton. The high ankle sprain concerns me a lot more. These guys lack explosiveness. It really hurts when they put their foot down. Um, and I know they want to just kind of grin and bear it and, and push through it, but they just you saw how ineffective he was. I'm going to read you his stat line. 11 rushes for 31 yards, 2.8 yards per carry. Seven receptions on eight targets for 35 yards. That's yeah. not Alvin Kamara. Very on Alvin Kamara. Like, let me ask you something. You said you saw the play when he – got help off the field. I didn't, I didn't actually see when he tweaked it. Uh, yeah. Did he get work after that or is that later in the game and he was out for the remainder of the game? No, I don't. I'd have, I have to put it, it was reviewed the day after. So I'd have to put it okay. in context. I mean, I knew that he, I, I didn't start him on any DFS teams. I don't have him in any season longs uh, that aren't like best ball. So I didn't have a choice. Like I didn't start him. I didn't have right. a choice to fit him. I started Latavius Murray. He did okay, um, and this is a tough matchup from this week, so I don't know if that's exactly someone you want to pivot to, but I have no interest in Kamara this week. If he does play, he's going to be injured, and he's going to be just as bad as he was last week, and he's just going to be a waste of a roster spot. My suspicion is they probably shut him down until when it breezes back. That's probably what's going to happen. That's what they should do so that they get kind of a rejuvenation. They're in a great spot right now. Uh, Bridgewater has been able to hold down the fort. Yeah, so even if they lose a game or two, I still think they're in the front running to make a playoff spot. And they need Kamara to to really make it far. Uh, and they can't risk him missing six weeks or something. So if they can nip this in the bud for two, three weeks with their bye week, they and they come back in week, uh, I think it's nine or ten, and just start rock and rolling, I think that that's ideal. Um, let Murray do his work. Let Thomas, uh, you know, help. Maybe Zenner does a little ground and pound. Um, but but I just don't think uh, Kamara is going to be very effective. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they signed Zenner should just tell you basically everything you need to know. And Kamara, you know, they play Chicago, so this is such a tough matchup, even if he does play. I think the Latavius Murray had a touchdown called back, I believe, so he could have had a bigger day. They play Arizona after Chicago, so they're not going to need Kamara to probably take that one home. But, yeah, I mean, Teddy Bridgewater has been phenomenal since Breeze has gone out, and he's put them in a position where they don't have to push – uh, Kamara because they've rattled off four straight wins and they sit at five and one right now. So when Breeze gets back at worst, they're going to be five and three. And that's very much in the playoff picture, no matter what, you know, division or conference that you're in. Mm-hmm. So uh, that being said, yeah, I wouldn't surprise me whatsoever to see them, you know, sit him out for the, uh, the following two games because you don't want to push a guy like Kamara because he's such an integral piece of that offense. Uh, speaking of an integral piece of the offense, the Steelers, James Conner was their entire offense last game with Devlin mm-hmm. Hodges there as the quarterback, um, he touched the ball like 24 times, and that was while seceding 
17 carries to Benny Snell, his backup at the time, because Jalen Samuels is already dealing with an injury. He'll be out for the next three or four weeks. Now, James Conner has dealt with like 17 injuries already this season. He left this game with a quad injury and then did not return. I believe that was like midway through the third quarter. Now, I don't know if the quad injury is anything to really be concerned about. And I feel like we bring this up and have the same conversation week in and week out. It's like, oh, you know, here's a new injury. Should we be concerned that all these injuries keep piling up and keep piling up? And it's like, okay, so we have the ankle, we have a knee, we have a quad, we have a thigh, we have a hamstring. It's, it's crazy at this point, right? But, like, have you heard anything about James Conner's uh, um, thighs? So the good news quad? is that he's on the bye. Yes, yes. So – um, and he doesn't play till Monday night versus Miami. So if there's a spot that you want to come back from, it's that spot. So he basically gets just about two weeks to heal up, which is ideal for this. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he was good to go or like a game time decision next Monday night. Okay. So he gets the whole week, 10 days to kind of heal up, and then he can start ramping up again. James Conner He's been banged up, as you said, a lot this year, but he's been pretty productive when he's in there. The good news is that he's kind of got the backfield to himself when he's healthy. Snell was in there. He looked pretty good. Uh, and as we know, Jalen Samuels is out for at least a couple, probably two to three more weeks, at least maybe four. This is Connor's backfield to lose. Um, I think Rudolph is probably going to be back by then as long as he clears the concussion protocol. So they, they'll maybe open up the offense a little bit. James Washington is still out with a shoulder. So um, they really kind of need to really rely on Connor. I think he'll be back in week eight. I, I, I'm re not really concerned. Again, another quad injury like Cooper, like Hilton, like uh, some of these other guys, like Gurley. Um, it's just like the season of the quads right now. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's, let's pivot over to the Redskins backfield which is really not a backfield you want to own very much of in fantasy. But, you know, with the new head coach taking over, they want to establish the run, which means the running backs are going to get a lot of carries. We saw Adrian Peterson coming off a 23-carry a game. He went over 115 yards, 118 to be exact, against Miami, which any running back could probably do. Bigger news is Chris Thompson is diagnosed with a turf toe, which is probably – you know, they're, they're saying that his availability for week seven is up in the air. He's probably not going to play. We also are seeing some stuff about Darius Geis, who is on the IR. He's not even eligible to come back and play for, I don't think, another like two weeks. But it puts a little, uh, a little bit of an interesting twist here because Geis is not a guy that we wanted to draft in season long, but he's someone that could be very involved if, like, I mean, if you think he could be effective by like week 10, week 11, week 12 ish, where your fantasy playoffs start ramping up, he could take over that Adrian Peterson role at a probably a more talented level. And if Chris Thompson's banged up, maybe even more of a pass catching role as you start getting more into the fantasy playoffs. So we have Chris Thompson. You're shaking your head over there. So it seems like he's probably not going to be in there for week seven. Yeah, this is about the Adams all over again. Okay. And uh, what, what, do you, what, is your, what is your take on Darius Geis right now? Do you think he's just like a lost cause for this season? I, I've had a couple of people reach out today um, asking about Geis, and I was a little curious as to why because he's kind of been MIA for like a month now. Yeah. That's because they said that, you know, he's, he, he's potentially going to return – he had a large meniscal tear, which is what Jalen Samuels had, um, and he had surgery. There's a very good chance that he um, can return in probably week whenever he's eligible, and I think he'll be fine. Yeah. Um, I think he's a nice pickup if you can afford the bench spot with the bye weeks, and we're, the bye weeks really haven't even hit yet because there's a couple weeks that are about to go crazy with the Chiefs yeah. and whatnot. Um, so if you can afford him, but he's probably going to be on your bench for like two, three weeks before you can use him. So you may not have that luxury unless it's a super deep league. Um, I think he is a good by low. I think um, Adrian Peterson is going to really struggle this week versus that dominant San Francisco line, yeah. um, as you saw last week. And I think Chris uh, Thompson's probably going to miss a good two to three weeks. Um, Chris Thompson's effective until he's injured. We do this every year. They really don't have anybody else. So uh, I think this is just more targets for, for F1 Terry. Let's go, baby. Um, and, and I think McLaurin, I mean, this is a tough uh, matchup for anybody. Uh, this is probably going to be a similar game to last week, maybe even uglier, um, even though it's in Washington. But I just think that I don't want anything really to do with this offense. Jordan Reed is finally on IR uh, and hopefully forever just for his own brain's sake. I haven't seen anything about Vernon Davis. Uh, but they're really banged up, and uh, I really don't want anything to do with this team. Uh, Geis is a, a buy low, as we said, but that's about it. Right now, I mean, um, 
a bad spot for Adrian Peterson, and, and you, you kind of have to hold on to Chris Thompson for a couple weeks. Yeah, I have him benched somewhere in like a 10-team league. I'm probably going to end up dropping him because he hasn't been in my lineup. So it's just like yeah. he's there for bye weeks. But if he's not even going to be 100% healthy, I don't know if I want to throw him in. We did yeah. just get a breaking news alert from Sleeper. John Gruden said Tyrell Williams has plantar fasciitis and it's not getting much better. So I don't think we knew much about the foot that Tyrell Williams was dealing with. They're coming off the bye and now yeah. he is still not practicing, which tells you this is not good news. And for those that had Terrell Williams in the beginning of the year, I mean, he looked like one of the steals of the draft if you took him because Antonio Brown left town. He became the de facto one who's getting in the end zone every single week, seeing eight to 10 targets. And you're like, oh shit, you know, I just got like a really strong wide receiver to play in the 10th, 12th, 14th round in some drafts. Um, this plantar fasciitis, the fact that, you know, Don Gruden's coming out and saying it's not getting better. Uh, this seems like it's a cause for concern. I don't even know really what Oakland has behind Tyrell Williams because you could talk about Hunter Renfro. You could talk about them getting Zay Jones, but it's like I don't really want a slot guy in a shitty offense. Like give me a guy like Tyrell Williams who has the the build of being an actual alpha. It just seems like now everything is going to go to Darren Waller, you know? Jacobs. Yeah, that's about it. Remember when we were concerned about Amari Cooper in the preseason? Yep. We're saying plantar fasciitis is nothing to joke about. Yeah. Well, this is acute plantar fasciitis. Amari Cooper has chronic plantar fasciitis, which is like over six months, probably several years for Amari. Right. Acute plantar fasciitis is god awful. If anybody has had plantar fasciitis, describe your symptoms in the comments below because it is freaking awful. When I see this in my clinic, people describe this as a combination of walking on glass and walking on sharp nails. Those are the two descriptions that I commonly get. Um, and it's usually... Uh, as you start walking in the morning, as you get going, it gets a little bit better. But when you sit down or rest and then try to walk again, it comes back. Um, very painful, hard to treat. You can't put a cortisone injection in here because it will tear the plantar fascia. Um, and you really uh, can't even walk, never mind run, with plantar fasciitis. So you need to calm this down and it takes several weeks to calm it down. Obviously the bye week didn't even seem to help him that much, mm -hmm. which tells you that he's probably a good couple more weeks out from really returning. And when he does return, is he going to be a hundred percent? Probably not for a couple more weeks. So this is a, not a good situation. My suspicion initially was a midfoot sprain like Cam was dealing with for the, uh, Liz Frank, but uh, in actuality was plantar fasciitis. Um, very uncomfortable. Um, and very unfortunate for Tyrell Williams' owners. He was a pretty good lock for a touchdown each week, even though if he didn't do much else. Now this is going to go to more Waller, maybe more uh, Foster Murnau, or however you pronounce his name. Oh, yeah. And then um, Jacobs uh, will probably get some looks versus Green Bay. But um, I, I almost can say for 100% certainty that he that he will be out this week, and we'll have to kind of go forward as we, as we see. But unfortunate news for Tyrell uh, Williams' owners. Yeah, it's shitty. Um, so what looks to be a little bit of a less shitty situation compared to what I thought we might see is for those Evan Ingram owners. Now, I play in one tight end premium league, which you get extra points per reception for tight ends. And Evan Ingram was my tight end pick in that league. And he was doing phenomenal for me, catching a lot of balls and you know, putting up the points for me. Then he sprained his MCL and he missed last week. It kind of came out of nowhere. We didn't really hear it. And then all of a sudden one day it was like, yep, he's dealing with a sprained MCL. Yep. I'm like, he's out tomorrow. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just having talked to you about this a few times, that's usually, you know, you already brought it up once already in this video. He is back at practice, practicing in full. And that would, you know, that, that should give us confidence as Evan Ingram owner, even though it didn't happen. I mean, it happened, what, like eight days ago or something? Yeah, and maybe 10 days ago, something like that. Yeah, eight, 10 days ago. The fact that he's already practicing in full means that we should have pretty full confidence to insert him right back into our lineup, right? I mean, he's going against the Cardinals, so he's, I mean, if he is, yeah. in fact, 100%, or, yeah, like he should be a tight end one, if, you know, probably top three. But in reality, if the health is not a concern, if he's getting on the field at 95%, tight end one. Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, you can't ask for a better spot for for uh, Ingram this year, as we saw how much um, uh, Arizona just continues to get just destroyed by tight ends. Hooper went ham last week. Uh, this is a, an ideal spot. Saquon will be back as well. Uh, very, very good chance. As far as Ingram, I'm not overly concerned about this knee. I think he tweaked it. I think he just didn't have enough time with a short turnaround from a Sunday to Thursday game. 
um, to, to bring him back. Plus flying in cold weather, not a good combo. Probably would have made it worse. Smart idea to give him a 10, 12 day rest, have him come back in a smash spot and then continue on from there. I think they have a bye week coming as well. As far as uh, his knee, I think that, um, I'm not overly concerned. I think that he uh, will, will, will continue to rock as a top five ten. And we just lost Disley with a torn Achilles, a uh, very unfortunate injury for a guy that just came back with the torn patellar tendon last year. So this guy can't catch a break to save his life. The, the uh, tight end's getting ridiculously thin right now. Uh, so you really need Ingram, and I think he will deliver. We also saw Henry come back last week and just went very, very, very impressive. You saw how much they love to use tight ends in that offense, and it, it, it came out to fruition. I told everybody last week on uh, some of the mediums as I was on, if he's in the lineup, you start him because they like him. Um, we don't know what the injury was, but uh, you saw that he looked fine and he did a great job and I expect him to go forward. If you happen to have both Henry and Ingram, which I do in a couple leagues, I think you start them both. I, I, I think it's silly not to, I know we don't traditionally you start two tight ends, but uh, I mean, I, I think both are, might as well be wide receivers at this point. Yeah. I mean, there's no question about it. Like throw Henry in the tight end spot, Ingram in the flex spot. Cause if you look at Ingram basically as the number one wide receiver on that team, you know, you're not really like hesitant to start two tight ends because the way that the NFL works nowadays, it's like, these guys are weapons. They're not necessarily tight ends. And that's the way you got to look at them in fantasy as well. I don't think we have any other major injuries at the tight end position. We had Kittle dealing with the groin, but obviously just naturally the fact that he was dealing with it and everyone downgraded him means that he has one of his biggest games of the year. So I'm not worried about him. Uh, Kittle's obviously a tight end one. And that's all the major injuries, I think, concerning this week in particular for guys that we're worried about for fantasy. Um, Christian Kirk, we are still waiting for him to be 100%. Cliff Kingsbury said he's not on the field uh, until he's 100%. So when they do put him back on the field, you don't really have to worry about whether or not he's healthy because they're only doing it at 100%. So um, nothing really to be concerned sure. about there. I don't think he's back this week. He's, not, he's not ready yet. He's dealing with a high ankle. He's not ready. Okay. Yeah. So and then, uh, Marquise Hollywood, not looking good for this week either. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on with Marquise, man? They haven't given us any details. If it's a re injury to his foot, if it's an ankle, uh, remember he had that Liz Frank uh, tear when he was uh, finishing college and he had the uh, off season surgery. Yeah. We have, we don't know if it's that a re injury to that different part of the same foot, other foot. We don't have details. Is it an ankle? It looked like he rolled his ankle. Traditionally, ankles don't keep guys out this, you know, a good yeah. two weeks, three weeks, unless it's a high ankle, um, in which it can be, but it didn't look like it. We saw how dynamic uh, this offense can be with and without him, um, but uh, not looking good. Um, and then, man, the Eagles are struggling on offense without Deshaun Jackson. I know, and dude. They, they just cannot stress the field. They're using Miles Sanders as that, and – well, he looks good. Um, they really need the jacks back. The problem is, as I've been saying, this this hernia surgery injury does not heal well without surgery, and he's gonna he's been dealing with that. They should have sent him to uh, stay in Philly. The, the renowned specialist for her sports hernias is there, uh, and they should have just got it done. But hindsight's twenty twenty, uh, and now he's gonna try to be back, but I just don't know when he's gonna feel comfortable enough to be effective, if he is. Yeah, he's gonna come back and re-injure himself, man. Like, like he, I mean, you said this after the first week. Like, he needs a surgery in order for this to be a fixed problem, and then they just want to sit him and rest him, and he's just like never gonna start practicing again. So, who knows what's going on there? It's really unfortunate because he was uh, looking yeah. like an absolute fantasy steal coming off the drafts this summer. Um, but that's all we got for y'all today. So, hopefully. It didn't chop up too much. I know we had a little bit of lag, but y'all can probably push through. I don't even know if it recorded the lag or if it was just on my side or not, but I think it came out well. Uh, make sure you are following Dr. Morse on Twitter, at Dr. Jesse Morse. The Twitter will be right there, as well as all of his information, his YouTube channel, the Fancy Doctor stuff, linked down below in the description, because, of course, we break down the bigger players, but him and his team are diving into all of the injuries. If you play other fantasy sports as well, a lot of them uh, cover you know baseball and things like that. Obviously, the season's coming to an end. But, um, you know, they cover all that stuff very in-depth, and they do a really, really good job on their other social medias, as well as Patreon, patreon.com slash Doctors if you want to support them as creators and get all of their most in-depth content, their premium stuff. That's where you find it. Doc, thank you for joining us again, and we'll see y'all next Thursday. Peace.